Okay. Let's try this again. That's one way to get paint to die on my brushes. That's one way to do it. So, Captain Obvious here, when you notice that the your the screen is getting kind of dull, it's probably because your power got disconnected from your uh, laptop. So, I don't know what's going on. There's a couple of outlets in here in this room that when one is working, the other one stops working for a while. And I thought it was just the one over by the wall, but apparently it's a issue with this one too because um, I had gotten disconnected and you guys didn't see that but um, I have the computer and this light connected to the same thing and the computer everything was plugged in the plug here worked but it wasn't getting juice and that's what happened is the computer was never charging so I guess when I started streaming it was never charging even though it was connected to the plug and everything so we switched to a different plug so hopefully somebody doesn't walk in here and trip over the cord. I don't know what the hell's going on with this house. But it's not like it's an old house, but oh well. Can we can we talk about uh the 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 flesh here that we're doing, the Middle Eastern flesh. Now we gotta get everybody back in. Oh well. Shit happens. All right, um, I guess we'll have to mix it up again. Let's get some black. And mix this up here. It's always something. I'm a fan of learning from my mistakes, so if I ever see those things going dull, I'll know what it is. But, I mean, everything was connected. That was connected. I checked it. It was still connected. It was still connected to the wall. I'm not. I don't know. Figured maybe I'd kick the power supply and then, nope. Lot of bearded people in this army. Okay, so we've painted this figure completely in. Colors don't come up well. At least they don't look like they come up well. In the feed, something had to give, right? Okay, so we're going to take... Just like if we were paint, painting regular skin, it's not going to be much different. We'll add more of this base color, the leather brown.
slender. we can do that and modify that okay <clears throat> all right this one's too big too what happened to my um, the brush I was using for everything this fine detail one let's take some time to find this I'm lucky I haven't had any of these issues when I've done a live game. I haven't done too many of those, but. All right, so we've got a little bit more of this base color in here with a black. And start defining some of these muscles on here. So in a nutshell, to skip ahead, the only difference when I'm just doing the regular Caucasian skin is I'm going to, normally what I do is I build up to this color and then I start adding the flesh. I'm going to start adding the flesh color when I'm closer to this. So it'll be a little bit more muted looking. And you can tinker with that and give guys different skin color, what have you. Not everybody's going to be the same pigmentation. Hold on a second. This is getting really annoying. Let me do another check again. Okay. It looks like it's not upside down, so. Okay, make sure that's on your screen, too. 
Let's go over here. Okay, doesn't look like it's back asswards. Or mirror asswards. <laughs> Now you know when you're watching some TV show why there's like four actors and there's 400 people on the credits. Yeah, so those 400 people have to get everything else going right. Okay. Hmm. And I never had to do any of that in the... Um, any of my other filming I never had it it's only this particular program that gets the, the camera to talk to the computer and for some reason the default is the image being mirrored nobody wants to see that a mirrored image that's annoying Back again. I never left. So for those of you who didn't hear my intro, the problem was is when the screen started going dark, my computer apparently was plugged in the whole time but was never getting juice. So I don't know how long the first video was. Call it 45 minutes. Everything was being powered from the laptop, not plugged in, which it's a good thing that I try to keep it plugged in. I, I never use my laptop unplugged on purpose. So, I don't know whether this, but nothing was loose. It was connected here, was connected to the wall. Now, I know for a fact there's another plug in this room that doesn't work well. So, maybe there's two of them in this room. That was a totally different outlet. So, it's connected to a completely different outlet out there behind the thing. And um, now I know if I see my screen going a little dull, I know that it's working on... It's not connected. You know, over here at the Noob Painting Channel. Actually, I'm not a noob at painting. I'm just a noob at everything else. Oh, well. Never claimed I was perfect. Never going to happen. But that's what happened. It kicked by the time I realized what was going on. I got I'd gotten kicked offline. I'm like, why did I get kicked offline? Oh, it's got no juice. Oh. Okay, so we've got this um, medium brown tint. Now, normally, if I was painting regular Caucasian, I would I would continue adding this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this as the starting point. Let's add a little bit more, more of this color here so we have more of it to work with. Okay, this is basically what we've painted the entire figure in is this. I'm not going to go up to this color. I'm going to start adding the flesh onto this. It's going to make them look more muted, more darker. I just don't want every single figure looking Caucasian looking. Now, you know, some of these guys are supposedly kind of light skinned, but look, the reality is, is they're desert nomads. They've been in the freaking sun forever. They're going to look different. And if I don't like how it turns out, you just repaint them. Whoop-de-doo, you know? Not a big deal. 
Now these are all barefoot, so we're gonna have to paint little toesies on there or the impression of that. Tech stuff, it should have worked. It should just work, damn it, that's right. That's right. By the way, in response to your plastic comment, I prefer metal, okay, but a figure is really good that I don't mind. We'll never touch resin again though, okay, because it, it just cracks probably. What was that resin stuff I used to use way back when? Verlinden. If you ever did 135th scale stuff, the Verlinden stuff was just amazing. But wet, dry sandpaper, all those things. Kicking it like it's the 1990s. Uh, pay attention, asshole. <laughs> Got to keep yourself on a short uh, leash here. <laughs> oh, I'm going to paddle myself later. Whatever the hell that means. Definitely one of the most tedious parts of painting, but I actually enjoy painting these fleshy bits. It makes the figure really come alive. It's like you it doesn't even look like a human until you start putting the flesh on there. And the wet palette helps. It still dries out some, but it helps as far as. Um, not having to spend so much time mixing. It's not that I can't get the color right again. It's just that, you know, it just takes time to, to do all that. Yeah, they make some really nice stuff in plastic and 28 millimeter. I just, well, it's 28 millimeter. I don't, I can't, I can't, I don't have the time to spend 12 hours on a figure. That's what it would turn into. That's what it would turn into. And then the game wouldn't necessarily have more detail. See, I'm a big fan of the more detail you the figures should have, vehicles, whatever, the more detail the game should have. So if I went to a larger scale, it would be, I wouldn't want to play something this abstract. I've thought about, um, if I did 28 millimeter, then uh, I, would, I would have to base the figures in a way that they'd be on round stands so I could use them for a skirmish game and just pull them out and then just plop them in, you know, the bigger one and then move that as a unit as well, but I've been tended to go down I've I've my tendency has been to go into smaller scales as I go, not get larger. So maybe the opposite of what everybody else is doing is I've gotten older. You know, like my naval stuff used to be twenty four hundred scale. If I did naval now it'd be one six thousand because I can get more done painting. So. I do sixes, but there just isn't the figure variety. I 
All right, so now we're going to gut that done. Let's add a little bit more flesh. I never even checked the weather. Got that stupid storm coming this way, which is just going to be a shitload of rain, which we don't need any more of. Got the ground super saturated. I'm going to have to do yard work before that. And then we're probably going to get rain for four out of the five days of the work week for sure. People that go, you know, I don't know how you have the patience to paint these guys. So it's easy. When I paint them, they don't unpaint themselves. It's not like you go out and spend three hours working on your yard and a week later you got to do it all over again. You know, that's frustrating. This isn't frustrating. Only thing I hate about plastic is assembling them. I could totally see that, Dirk. Totally see that. You know, I wouldn't like that either. You don't like the lack of weight or the fact that stuff breaks. Yeah, plastic becomes brittle over time also. Wow, I never thought about that. I guess you're right. Yeah, it loses its, um, as I like to call it, the lubrication, you know, the flexibility. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. There's some company out there that I saw that, and it might be a Spanish company. They just came out with some 28 millimeter L Cid time period knights that are just absolutely gorgeous, but they're all plastic and in their own scale. So it's like double whammy, but they're absolutely like, I could say they look as good as anything in a museum, but as you guys know, there's stuff in a museum that shouldn't be there. That's not, um, but just some really epically good looking stuff. But you got to be careful with them. God forbid if somebody else is, uses your army and they break something. I just, I don't need that kind of stress in my life. But they look absolutely gorgeous. I got to refurb that army to 3.0. My first army, feudal Spanish. And this same type of method you could use for people from India, for instance. And the other guy, I'm not going to paint him exactly the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up a little higher and not have as much black in the base coat when I start adding the flesh to it. I just make them a little, just a little bit of different variety, you know. Whew. I said, this part isn't quick, but I, I really enjoy this part. Especially, you know, Essex has decent looking faces. They got faces with features you can paint on them. So are they old school? Sure. Have they been around forever? Yeah, but the faces paint up well. They're a little short legged and stumpy, but that's okay. I wonder where my little foamy thing went. I really don't know where that thing's off to. I did a really good job of hiding that bastard. So we can put this on that it doesn't slide off.
Okay. I'm going to use a little restroom, get more coffee. I'll be right back. And I got to be careful while I open this door. I don't trip over it. This wire doesn't get clipped.
upside down. Go ahead and primer the, those other figures. Yeah, we're going to be flipping back and forth. The important thing is to continue moving. It's time to make a mess. Hey, you didn't get any on me. It's a miracle. So I don't need any more hobbies that, well, I don't need any more hobbies, period, end of sentence. And I certainly don't need any more hobbies that take an inordinate amount of time to, to get anywhere on. So. With any luck, these guys will be done, not by this Monday, but by the next, but it may take some luck to get them done as well. Well, we'll see. They'll be done when they're done. I just don't want to go back and work on this army. You know, I want them to be done, and although the Knight General is definitely something I'm going to have to come back to at some point. Okay. Let's just do the guy. It's the same pose. Make it easy. This is so much quicker than using the spray paint because if you use the spray paint you still have to go in there and hand brush the parts that the spray paint missed it's always going to be something that they that the spray paint misses on there and in doing that and trying to get those other spots you end up making the paint so much thicker you can't you can't just give them another coat of spray paint or you'll have places that have way too much paint on them and then some that hardly any so there's going to be some brush painting involved. Might as well just brush paint the whole damn thing and be done with it. Coffee. 
I didn't get more coffee. I'm not enjoying the taste of coffee very much. Of course, I can't say that I ever drank coffee because of the taste. I drink it for the octane. So these crossbowmen, I figure, are going to have some kind of a tie-in to the red and white color. I don't think I'm going to go completely random looking. Ooh, a different pose. How exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. The folks with mustaches. I came close to just getting eight of them in this pose here. Because I like the little round helmet that they have. But that would have been really annoying to have eight guys that every single one of them has the same facial hair is just a mustache. Okay, halfway there. Three more. And then 
and this will have to dry and we'll go back to the amorites. Yeah, if you're not doing that, then you're constantly like, okay, well, what do we do the next 30 minutes, you know? So yeah, it's really annoying when I wake up in the morning and I'm like, all right, well, let me go. What's the first thing I got to do after I paint so I can paint? I got to go check all my turns and turn them in on Field of Glory. So I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm going to be playing any more games that for a little while. Not because the game's not good, but I got a lot of stuff to do. And that's another 30 or 40 minutes that, you know, by the time you load it up, Think about what you're going to do, and you're playing multiple games at the same time. It's like, that's really cutting into my painting time. Let's try to do this and see if this makes a difference. Because I use a little bit better brush than I normally would have used for this. Get 
some of this brush cleaner stuff. swear by this stuff like a lot of people do. Okay, cool. Yeah, I had like a little ring that was happening here towards the end of it. I wanted to get rid of that. Okay, good. Excellent. We'll keep using that one then for that. I may leave this guy in this color. So let's go ahead and work on the bow and stuff. Let's use a color for the bow. There's a little bit of a yellow to it. No, not a rack sand bow. No. Gonna use a rock with sand. He's in the desert, it's probably really dry. So I like doing one figure first. Maybe something happens, I don't like how it turns out. I haven't committed to painting a bunch of figures the wrong way or a way that I didn't like. Peace of mind. Gotta figure out what I'm gonna listen to while I'm mowing lawn today. I started a new book. I'm not really digging it. It's called Killing Patton by Bill O'Reilly. I like this Killing Reagan book. The Killing Patton one is narrated by O'Reilly himself. And I hadn't really noticed this, but he breaks his words off in different places, mispronounces things, just just seems awkward. He's, he's reading the book like he would read the news, and it just doesn't sound right. Um, the story's okay, just 
I expected it to be better. So. Oh well. They can't all be winners, right? Dan Jones has a new book coming out in a couple months. Be getting that. Considering I've enjoyed all of his books. Audiobook coming out, I should say. What's it doing over here? Mm-hmm. I saw that happen. Nobody likes a fumble fuck. <laughs> Australian Greg is the second of a triple feature. No, there won't be three. If this one disconnects two, then. So. My, my power to my computer was connected, but the outlet died or something weird happened. So when it ran out of juice, it cut off. Yet, it's the same plug that this light's plugged into. I don't know. Maybe I have a faulty power thing. Not really sure. Anyhow, that's what happened. I ran out of juice. It was connected the whole time. I don't use my laptop at all for anything unplugged. I mean, you can, but... You never know when you may need it. So... Yeah, I checked all the connections. All the connections were tight. It was plugged in correctly. It was plugged in correctly to the wall. It was plugged in correctly to the computer because sometimes it's a magnetic plug. So sometimes instead of it being in this way, it can be 90 degrees rotated and still up against it where you think it's connected, but it isn't. It wasn't the case. At some point, it just kind of petered out because it was connected at some point. I don't know. Whatever. I know if the, if the, if the pictures, if the writing gets dull, I know to look for that and move it to another one. So now I got it plugged into a different part in the room where it really shouldn't be. It's kind of a tripping hazard. So hopefully there will not be a third. There won't be a third one. Now these are the Amrides. The, the crossbowmen have been cleaned up glued together and are primed and they're drying so we'll go back and finish them up one 
This is dumb. There's no point in not getting anything done. You keep moving forward. You don't want me to cop out of doing a book one army, do you? I already sold one. I sold one of my book. I only had two book one armies and I sold one of them or in a horse trade to somebody. Because I was just never going to get them done. And that was it. Uh, Lydians. I'm sure we're looking at white. A little bit more. Complete the Saloy before going to the crossbow or stop midstream. The crossbowmen have priority. I want to get that army complete. So we're just killing time until they get done. Okay, and I heard one of the things I read the other day is these arrow things are leather. So let's paint, paint them leathery. Of course, that could mean all kinds of colors. such a hard time doing the little plumes on the arrows not in white. You could do like a dark gray color, but then it just looks like you got lazy and just didn't finish it. Debased all the figures from my mapped Hundred Years War armies. And I'll commence debasing them after I've done some touching up. First up, a medieval French. 
you can redo the the different style basing on them. I looked at them. They, I didn't see anything wrong with them. Maybe just weren't happy with them or had to add some elements. But I guess that was the medieval French and the English, huh? Can't believe you glued them with Elmer's glue. Well, it comes in handy if you have to take them off. I just don't trust that stuff for anything. Any important jobs, I don't trust that stuff. It takes a long time to dry, also. I use um, epoxy to glue mine down, and I've had to rebase some figures, and it wasn't that much of an issue. And I was able to rebase the stands. I guess that's official. Nobody's playing 2.2 in Australia, huh? We played lots of games of 2.2. There's just stuff in it I, I just wouldn't be able to tolerate anymore. I wouldn't be able to tolerate, you know, all bow being the same, whether they're an eight bow, a crossbow. Measuring all corners. Cavalry just doesn't, I mean, not cavalry, knights just don't move far enough at all in the field. And really weird to be able to move out of combat. That's strange. I mean, now, looking back. You use the goop basing method. Oh, cool. The goop. That is. Trademark that. I'm not going to go all the way up with it. We'll stop just shy of the core color.
had some kind of little details on there. Just something to add a little something. Sometimes the uh, Essex figures are kind of barren from the standpoint of having details. You got to have to add them on yourself, which is all right. Okay, we're going to call this guy done as far as no case. Now we're going to finish this guy all the way through. Let's run a roll. All right, turn the corner now. Oh, it looks like a, oh, there's a person underneath there. Perfect. Have I touched up the edges of the papal banner yet? I did. And you know what I did? I did red. That's what I'm going to start doing from now on. I'm not going to try to trim it in black. I like the idea of black, but it's impossible to get right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where is he? Where's the popiness? Yeah. I mixed a red color that's very similar to what's there, and I think it turned out really well. Um, yeah, we'll see how this bastard does in battle. Probably shitty. Well, you know, the reality is, is the popes historically, when the, the papal armies historically, at least prior to... the 15th century pretty much lost most of the time so um, I'm not saying you lost every time but it'd be a good idea to not bet on the Pope so um, so that's good I suspect my guy will do better than they would historically I should at least be able to split with this army. 50-50. Yeah, I think he turned out pretty well. This guy. And then I'm putting him here at an angle so you can see a little bit more of their shields. I really like that I used... I want to. I don't want to offend anybody when I say this. I'm going to say it anyways. Second tier type figures. In other words, these aren't the figures people were rushing out to buy. Nobody's out rushing out to buy alternative armies figures. There's nothing wrong with them, but I already had them. Let's go the right way here. You know, and I still don't know who the hell makes this spearmen here. The spearmen that are on the corner of the Pope stand, I don't know. Somebody suggested who they were. I looked them up. That wasn't them. Free Corps, I think, is what they said. No. I don't know who the hell they are. Doesn't matter. They look good. I had exactly four of them. Perfect fit, right? Wrong way. Yeah, I think it turned out really well. I like these little, oh, over here. I like these little keys. That was fun. It didn't have to look perfect like a decal. They were hand painted too, you know. They just, here, take a brush and start painting keys. You know, not, they got Michelangelo to paint them, so. My first green stuff guy. Will it, the beginning, will it be the beginning of something else? Who, so, who knows? I was all excited because I was going to make the the camp for damn rights be some kind of child sacrificing Baphomet type thing. 
I was excited for Baphomet. No. Anyways, it would have been cool. You know? And then I come to find out, no, that's not, oh, that's the Ammonites. I'm like, okay, potato, potato. But then I was looking up some, I was doing some, looking up some uh, uh, information on some ideas for how to paint these Ammonite armies. I came across an article, some conspiracy type article, which I never read, but I read a little bit of this one. Because it was the Amorites. Talking about the Amorites and Illuminati or something like that. And how it was the child sacrificing thing. So, I maybe I will make a, a, a child sacrificing idol. I'm not going to buy one. That's creepy. I'll make my own that's, you know, definitely not blessed by anything evil. It's just green stuff. I have to work on tactics to get the best out of the litter. It's an extremely static army. I need to work on put downs. Pope put downs. Not just excommunication. We could do better than that. Okay. Let's paint his little his little thing. So we're gonna do um Let's do white. Then we can all, always put another color in there as well. So let's just do white. Well, unlike my Hungarians, which I had played before, with somebody else's figures. I added them to the total, which wasn't beneficial for them because I think they're sitting at like three and seven or something like that. I've never played this army, the the papal one. So they get to start with a fresh record. So we'll see. We'll see how they do. It'll be fun to play. But they're not going to be like the Burgundians or the Irish or anything like that that just have a ridiculous winning record or the Athenians I have an Athenian army to do I've already played the Athenians I'm like 13 and 2 with them or something something ridiculous luck of the Athenians Not a ton of frill on this. So let's bring this up. May just do a single color on these guys since they're just crummy little saloy. I don't want to make them too fancy and then you have to out fancy the other guys as well and the next thing you know you've got guys that are really really bright because you needed to make them so much brighter to, to stand out from you know the more common mundane people
Not bad. That little bit of detail that he has there on the um, on the boat case helps. You know, there's a great quote from the Albigensian Crusade: "Burn them all; God will know His own." Okay. Well, burn them all. Crispy Cathars. <laughs> Plain, but I'm pretty happy with him. And he's going to be on basing that looks similar to this. But there's going to be some greenery on it. A little bit. Remember, these are the plainest looking folks in the army. You know, these guys right here. So I love these Carige guys. What a cool looking Middle East armies look really, really neat. Um, mainly because a lot of times you got to use really mundane colors. And when you put them together, it just kind of works. Now this will, this is going to be my substitute for my little, uh, my little foamy, wherever the hell the foamy went. I have no idea. It's not like I threw that thing away. Mm. All right. Let's do his little arrows. Yeah, we're going to do white arrow tips. The white arrow feathers. Of course. Red might look nice, but where the hell are they going to get a red bird from in the desert? How's that going to happen? It's possible, but doesn't seem right. This guy, we're going to give him black hair. Ben Wadi, welcome back. You're just starting on an Arab conquest army, a cool army, no doubt. Museum and alternative armies have some characterable sculpt. Shame the museum camels are so big, they need a 40 by 40 base. It is a shame because those camels are really, really nice. And I know because I have quite a few of them. Yeah, I like I love my my Arab armies. Yeah, museum does good stuff. It's, okay, so it's one pose per pack. So just mix them in with other stuff. They make good. They're they're hefty. They don't fall over. They have a lot of detail. Did I end up adding some beards to some of these guys? I want to say I did. Yeah. Okay, so here's a museum guy. This guy right here on the end. I gotta remember it's freaking reversed. This guy right here. This is a museum figure that was, um, he was completely shaven. So I added a little beard to him. With green stuff. Looks a little bit like a Muppet. Kind of, in a way. But this is an old glory, and this is another museum guy. Yeah, I like these Arab armies, they're cool. And then this one. Here's another museum guy. This guy's an old glory guy. And then this one is, I think he's alternative armies with the banner. So, had a lot of fun painting that banner. This one guy knows someone who speaks Arabic and, and he 
gave me a saying and I tried to I tried my best to, to put it on there and it looks the part I mean I, I mean I don't speak Arabic but uh, you know anyhow that's uh, I, I wanted to build these guys because they had a they had knights and they had a fast war band and they had red banners like that that was the selling point was the red banner like there's something cool so They dye feather tips. Well, it's possible, but I'm going to go with white. This guy would have more dyed clothes than that, I would think. I don't know. We'll see how it looks. I won't seal them until I'm done with them, so I may just change my mind. But Sometimes I used to like really cogitate about stuff, but sometimes like, okay, just make a decision and go with it. And if you don't like it, you can always change it later. And you end up thinking more about it and, and you're just, and it ends up being just fine. I don't think dying feather tips would be that much of a priority for these folks in the desert. I mean, he doesn't even have shoes on. I don't think he's worried about that a whole lot. I got some other Arab armies on my to-do list, for sure. Tabletop games, right, which is alternative armies, right? Isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I didn't buy them recently, so I ended up buying them at a, I believe that guy came from a flea market in 2011 at Historicon, and it wasn't until last year that I used them, so I sat on his ass for like nine years. Hey, it happens. The only problem with some of these older figures is they sometimes... You get them, if you get them in a flea market, they're made out of the softer alloy. So if they have a flag or something, they'll end up bending a few times and then it's over with. You know, you can't do anything with it. It broke off. I think this guy's about done. Other than cleaning up his feet, which of course I have to do because I've, when I've been rotating him, I've gotten too close to his feet. And of course some of the paint is scuffed off. Yeah, we'll probably leave that to later and do them all. Let's get the, let's get the new foamy. Yeah, the first Amorite. Cool. Kind of plain looking, but hey, they'll work. These are the most basic looking folks in the entire army. All the auxilia and stuff, they'll have a little bit more color. Of course, the auxilia are bare chested, so that alone, they'll definitely have more, a little bit more detail on them than that. All right. 
Let's see where we are on these crossbowmen. These guys should be dry by now. Well, I believe these guys consist of one figure that's two poses and then two other figures that are sets of three po of three three figures each all in the same pose. So one, two, three, these are the same. One, two, these are the same. And then these three are the same. So we're gonna paint them in sets of three. Let's see what we're doing here. Cloth. Okay, oh, these are the dumbass dudes that have the freaking mustache. All right, cool. Does this guy have a covering? No, okay, and what about this guy? Okay, so they're all kind of different in their own way. All right, so we're gonna do some kind of a key motif uh, on these guys, even though it's small. So his tunic is gonna be red, which means the under tunic here on this figure is also gonna be red as well. He looks like he's got some studded leather armor over that, but that'll be red. Um, not the studded leather armor, but the part underneath. And then this figure um, looks like they have an undershirt as well that's also red but he also has like a little padded jacket. So that's gonna be the tie in. All of them are gonna have that red part. All right, let's get to it. And if I don't like it, I'll change it later. But All right, let's get, let's get the reds out. Red's always a fun color to paint. Especially if you come from like a World War II background or something like that. Something where you never got a chance to paint red before. And then you can just go hog wild now. But we're just going to worry about these three guys right now. Okay, here's our red, here's the black. Yeah, color's good. Okay, so this tunic is damn near the whole figure. this up
a little more. put the keys on the front of this guy. So before I brighten this up and add any white, let's get this down. I thought there was some live white here. I just, used, there it is. Oh, we've got a little something on the end here. Could just be an obstinate little bit of paint. Okay. Put two cross things here. Right in the middle of his chest. Well, oh, I already started doing it wrong. Mm. We'll let oops, we'll let this one go. I'm supposed to do circles first. come in here with the same red color that we still should have alive.
then we'll take this color that we have here and we'll brighten it around where the emblem is. I gotta start getting ready to go out there and mow, unfortunately. Oh, it starts to rain. Let's add a little tiny, the tiniest of white. Okay, I know this is just kind of preliminary, but so we got a red tunic and we got the little key symbol there. That's how these guys are all going to be. So anyhow, how long was this? How long was this one? I know the first one was like, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour or something like that. An hour and 40 minutes, not too bad. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by folks. We'll catch you guys probably later this weekend. Definitely tomorrow morning. We'll do another one of those, hopefully with power, so we don't get disconnected in the middle of it. But some things just unexpected are just bound to happen. So, okay. Well, until next time, thanks for stopping by. Happy.